one of the subjects that's been talked about a lot is the subject of the metaverse. It comes up everywhere. But before I get to the metaverse, I want to start by just reminding you, Unity, you know, we're so excited to be partnering and merging with, with Iron Source. Um, you know, we're the world's biggest platform for making these things, making these games. I'm guessing, how many of you out there make games built on Unity? I need more hands, that's everyone. <laughs> um, so, um, I'm super excited about that. But I'm also super excited about the merger with Iron Source. I'm going to talk about that. But we're so thrilled by things like half the world's games, 74% of the mobile games, all of this stuff. Super proud. We love games. I'm a gamer. I think there's nothing more exciting than the games industry. But one of the things that's really interesting is we've signed up over 1,000 major companies that are not game companies in the last 12 months alone to make something else. Generally speaking, I would describe it as the metaverse. The problem with the metaverse is it's kind of all hype and no substance. Um, I mean, I've never seen an industry come upon the press the way the metaverse has. It is literally every day in the newspaper. And there's these incredible claims, like $82 billion. I love this one. God, I hope they're right. $13 trillion. Um, <laughs> I don't even understand what they're talking about. And there's a good reason we don't understand what they're talking about. Here's some quotes from people that supposedly know what they're talking about. The first one is Nick Clegg, who's the president of global affairs at Meta, Facebook. Um, he wrote an 8,000 word essay on what the metaverse is. And of course, if your company's name is Meta and you write 8,000 words, you're gonna finally get to what it must be. It's a universal virtual layer that everyone can experience on top of today's physical world. That sounds like a blanket. I'm not even sure what he's talking about. Um, how about this one? Dolby. I love Dolby. You know, I think they, they're in all the movies I watch. I mean, who's not to like Dolby? I think the metaverse can take many forms, but ultimately it's an audiovisual experience. That tells you what it is. How about a piano bar where people's digital cells are gathering around, but they're actually playing their pianos at home in jamming with others. That, that tells you exactly where to pin the tail on the donkey. It is really hard to figure out what this is all about. And even Bill Gates, I mean, for God's sake, Bill Gates, he should know. I predict most virtual meetings will move from the 2D camera image grid, which I call the Hollywood Squares model, to the metaverse, a 3D space with digital avatars. I mean, has anybody tried to have a meeting with a digital avatar? I've tried, it is really hard. It's just not, not a pleasant experience. So one of the biggest problems I think we have in all of this is there is so much bloviating, so much pontificating, so much nothing being blown about about the metaverse. And I'm gonna do something that is probably gonna get me in trouble with all of you. I'm actually gonna define it. I'm gonna explain exactly what it is, and I hope at least one of you agrees with me. So I'm gonna do my best to put down on black and white what it is, but first off, and, and look, Melissa did this kindly, why would you listen to me? Why would I know anything about the metaverse? Well, look, I think there's a little in my background. You know, one is, I managed a big game company for the better part of 15 years, and most of the world's metaverse experiences derived from gaming in many ways. So at least I got a little bit of background in that arena. Unity, um, you might not know this, but 90% of that which is built on HoloLens, which is a XR device, is built on Unity. 70% of everything that's built for Quest is built on Unity. But three quarters of all AR, VR experiences everywhere in the world are built on Unity. So at least I get to see a lot of things. And I was a founding investor in, in Oculus and helped them write their first pitch, et cetera. So at least I've been around with a lot of this stuff. So there's a faint possibility I might have some idea. Um, I'll let you judge when I get to my definition. Now, who's heard of Neil Stevenson? Anybody? Well, he, he's a writer, brilliant science fiction writer. He actually invented the term in 1992. He invented the word metaverse. And um, he was describing, actually, a protagonist in a book, aptly named Hero Protagonist. And in the real world, he delivered pizza and he lived in a steel container. But in the metaverse, he wore XR glasses. He was a hero. He was a 
a champion. He was the top of the world. And what he was really showing us in that book was how the real world can connect to the digital world. And any of you that have ever played a game know that the real world can and often does um, connect to our digital lives. We have friends in the digital world we've never met before, but they're still friends. And one of the first games I was involved in launching, Ultima Online, 12 different couples met courted and got married inside the game before they ever met. So it is possible to connect, and I hope they connected in some way better than that um, through their marriages, but it does happen and it is real. Now, I think Neil got an awful lot right, and I think he got a few things wrong, but he presented a world that was every bit as real, and it augmented the world we live in. And so there's definitely a motivation that we've seen it in Ready Player One, another science fiction movie and book that also depicted something very similar. There's something coming, there's something real. And it is with this that I get into my definition. And it's pretty simple. It doesn't have anything to do with Hollywood squares or pianos. It simply gets directly to the point. It's the next generation of the, inter of the internet. It is where the internet is going. And I've got five connected clauses. It's always real time. Now you guys know what real time is, right? Real time means, like a video game, the next frame's never been seen before. Some combination of your thumb on a screen or your, your, your finger on the X button on a PlayStation controller or the triangle on a Xbox controller or your control on the up or down on a PC, you're controlling that screen. That, that next frame is rendered in response to you, your input, or someone else you're playing with, or some other AI. So what's happening is, this is media that wasn't printed a month ago and you're looking at something that's already happened. It's happening in that moment. It is real time. Now, the rest of this is not always, but mostly. So it's always real time. It's mostly 3D. You can have, you can have a, a metaverse experience that is 2D. They, they work, um, but they're mostly 3D. They're mostly interactive, meaning it's something that you are touching or feeling or moving or, um, it's, again, it's response to you. It's mostly social. Um, I have experienced things that are not social, but they are better when they are social. And they're mostly persistent, means, meaning that um, if you change something in the environment, it stays changed. Now, that's a simple definition. I'm gonna just describe on this blank screen a few examples of what people are doing with Unity. I'm going to show you one. So, you know, one of them that I find was super fun and interesting, and does anybody here follow the Golden State Warriors, their basketball team? Um, the Golden State Warriors play in a stadium in San Francisco. That stadium was designed by an amazing architect. It's a beautiful stadium inside if, if you've never been inside. But to win that business, they didn't do a blueprint. They used Unity. They created the full stadium. They put a basketball team on the court. They filled the stadium with fans, mostly Golden State fans. And they had the game being won by the Warriors for Joe Lakeup, the owner of the, of the Warriors, to see what this would be, to feel what this would be. And they let him walk around as an avatar through the space, through the concessions. He didn't look at a plan. He stood inside of a plan to experience that. Now here's another interesting thing. One of the requirements in the state of California is they need to do safety training in this stadium prior to every event. The problem is they have a lot of events. And so another thing they use Unity for is they have a full AR VR, it's an XR model for it. Um, and everybody that works in security and the concessions, they train inside of XR. They see the stadium and they do simulations around there's a fire, or there's a bomb, there's you know, someone that's breaking in. That is a radically different thing than reading a card that says, what am I supposed to do if something bad happens? They get to walk, it's actually in a warehouse separate from this, but they think they're in the stadium. They're experiencing it, it's all around them. That's another example of the metaverse. There is something fascinating going on, and you can tell I don't wear a lot of high fashion, but the folks from LVMH and Gucci and a lot of these brands, what their fantasy is they want to put their boutique, maybe not your homes, but people that are doing better in their careers, but they want to, <laughs> what they want to do is they want to dress you, your avatar, millimeter accurate. They want to dress you in your home and lock you in to purchasing their goods. 
And we're again building that with them. And it's another example of the way you're going to interact with goods and services. In this instance, you're going to literally dress yourself and look, you know, with your girlfriend or boyfriend, husband, wife, kids, or dog, you know, does your sweater look good next to the golden retriever? You're going to be able to see how all this works and feel in a highly realistic model. Another great example of the metaverse. For a major Korean car company, they're doing the factory of the future. They got their entire factory built inside of Unity. And again, here what they're doing is we're training the robotics arms so they can operate. But all the people that work in the factory are training with XR devices to see what it feels like so they can operate in the right way. Now, if you're all for saving the world, one of our larger customers, Google, um, has a division called DeepMind. They've created a model for how proteins and DNA interact when they're cancerous. And apparently, and I'm, this is way past my understanding of the science, but apparently you need to get trillions, trillions of examples, 3D frames around how proteins fold to unlock the secret of cancer. And they're very close to solving that. They're highly likely to um, earn a Nobel Prize from this. And it's literally trillions of frames per day, six to seven trillion frames per day, that they're creating of chemical reactions inside your body to identify the tracer marks for you know, how a cancer spreads, and then how to eradicate that cancer. Another one they're trying to solve is climate change. And they also may win a Nobel Prize for this. They're doing the same thing around nuclear fusion. So you can have neighborhood scale, small nuclear fusion reactions that are safe for power generation. Now it's gonna be a decade or so before we see these things. But again, this is a metaverse situation. They're creating a 3D environment. They can stand in it, look in it. They're trading trillions of frames of data. They're training AI algorithms and it's gonna to change tomorrow. Now, those last two um, over my head, but I'm gonna show you one that's not over my head if we can change the screen up here for a second. This is gonna change the way sports is consumed. Now, I'm gonna tell you what you're about to see because it's gonna be a little hard to believe. There are 84 cameras in an octagon in a UFC match, 84 cameras that we've put there, and we're ingesting data from the cameras, 84 of them. And what you're about to see is in fact a real match with real fighters and you can do all sorts of things, like be the fighter or not be the fighter. And what's different about this is with any live event, any sporting event, you can take over the body of your favorite soccer player or, yeah, I'll turn that down a little bit. But you can take over this fight, you can be in this fight, you can be wherever you want with this fight, and you can be in the body of the player. You can move the camera there in the moment you're watching it. All I'm pointing out is these are examples of the metaverse. These are the things that are gonna kind of change. And I just wanna go back to that definition I provided a minute ago. It's the next version of the internet. It's an internet that is real time, persistent, interactive, social. That's what all of these things are. That's what all of these things share. And my belief is by the end of this decade or sort of like the next six or seven years, most of the world's websites are gonna be like this. They're not gonna be photos and they're not gonna be cheesy videos. They're gonna be real time, they're gonna be interactive, they're gonna be social, they're gonna be persistent. They are going to be part of the metaverse. So what I would say first is you guys are working in exactly the right career. Leading all of this is the game industry. The game industry is a decade ahead of anyone working anywhere near the metaverse. What we know, they hope to know. What we do, they hope to do. What they dream is to be us. They dream to be you. So whether you know this or not, over the course of the next years, the demand for what you know how to do is gonna go through the roof. One of the biggest parts of Unity right now is we're being asked to train and provide hundreds of engineers to build these things, the industries outside of gaming, because they don't know how to play the game we know how to play. So the first thing I would tell you is, you're in exactly the right spot. You are doing your best 
possible career because you're working in the space that is tomorrow. Now, it happens to be the day today, too, if you're in gaming, but every industry you're going to come across is embracing what you know how to do. Second thought I would give you is it's hard. If you're trying to build a business or you're trying to build a real-time 3D application, it is difficult. To make a game, you need to learn how to code, you need lighting, you need physics, you need animation. You need to know how to do a lot of things. I mean, the science around user acquisition is mammoth in its math and its complexity. So this is not easy. But I can tell you one of the jobs that we have, and I'll touch on this in a few moments, between Unity and Ironshore is to make it easier, to help you find success where it might have been a little bit more elusive. So we're here to help, but make no mistake, it's not easy. And the third thing is, this is getting really hard. Um, we all live and die by the notion that LTV has got to be greater than or equal to CAC. If we can't get the LTV up and the CAC down, we're all in trouble. And we know that the changes around privacy have made that harder than it ever has been before. Um, you know, ecosystems like Apple, more expensive to find a user and that user's worth less than they used to be because we know less about them. And so with those lovely thoughts, how great it is, how hard it is, and how expensive it is, I'll just point out that we're here to help. Um, I don't know that exactly how we can help you, but I can tell you these things. We'll help you make better games, better applications, and better money while you're at it. So with that, I'm done. Thank you.